This is AMD's newest flagship Radeon RX 7900 XTX GPU featuring their newest RDNA 3 architecture, 24 gigs of GDDR6 memory and unlike Nvidia's 4080 or 4090 competitors, it still uses two of those older 8-pin PCIe connectors, meaning that you can pop this sucker right in and give it a spin without any sort of dongle or octopus or the need to get rid of your way too expensive cable extension. That being said, there are a number of aspects that I found to be surprisingly interesting when I first got this card. The first thing is, it's small, but not like 2016 type of small, but considering how extraordinarily huge 40 series or high-end 30 series cars are, this thing looks like a puppy next to it. But just because it's small doesn't mean that it won't draw a lot of juice. Running MSI Combustor, the RX 7900 XTX pulled 344 watts total board power, which is roughly what the 3080 Ti drew and slightly more than a 4080. But compared to Nvidia's flagship 4090, it is still a whopping 100 watts underneath. On that note, for the rest of this video, the exact 700 XTX model we will be referring to is AMD's reference model, while our 4090 is a Zotac Amp Extreme, the 4080 would be a Game World Phantom, and the 3080 Ti would be a Zotac Trinity. It won't change the world for the rest of the stats, but still, only the 700 XTX is a reference card with everything exactly how AMD intended it to be. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at how the 700 XTX actually performed. Let's start with the thermals. Once the three fans with the surprisingly dense heatsink kick in with default fan settings and pulling a total of 344 watts, the card quickly becomes harder and then reaches its max 69 degrees C or roughly 46 degrees C above ambient within somewhat a minute and a half. On that note, for all of our benchmarks, we were running on AMD driver version 22.12.2 and I'm saying that because there are numerous reports of the 700 XTX pulling over 100 watts while playing Windows desktop, which just wasn't the case for us. I don't know if every card was doing this two weeks ago or just a couple of them, but as of now, probably due to the magic of driver update, on 22.12.2 ours was pulling only 23, which is very much okay. On the coil wine and noise side, yeah, there is coil wine and fan noise, but I have seen worse. And now let's finally get to the real benchmark, starting off with some synthetics. On TimeSpy Extreme, the 7900 XTX scored 14,304 points, placing it a tiny bit in front of the 4080, but still miles behind the 4090. Switching over to Port Royal, the 7900 XTX started to fall behind and landed somewhere in between the 3080 Ti and 4080. The interesting part here is the position the 7900 XTX takes once the benchmark is more about ray tracing than it is just raw rasterization. If there are no rays, the 700 XTX seems to be comparable to a 4080, but once the light shines, they tend to drift apart, a phenomenon which we will see over and over and over again in this video. Running all three Blender 3.4 renders, the RX 700 XTX got a devastating blow with barely being able to deliver half the performance of a 3080 Ti. On that note, Blender also just started to uh, be compatible with Radeon cards, so uh, that kinda doesn't really count. For engine superposition at 4K optimized, it's back to normal again with roughly the same performance as a 4080. Fermark's 4K benchmark preset then created another gap with the 7900 XTX being about 15% behind the 4080. As a last non-gaming related benchmark, we rendered the same 2 minutes clip we do for CPU reviews and although the 700 XTX was the slowest of the bunch, the difference is just by far not big enough to make it out of the margin of error zone, so uh, no our render is still too heavily CPU bound. Coming to game benchmarks in 4K and starting off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider 4K, highest preset, all possible ray tracing options disabled. Here the average FPS counter settled at 117 while the 1% lows were at 103, just slightly below the 4080. Pushing the resolution down to 1440p changed this up a bit with the 700 XTX landing behind the 3080 Ti. With the resolution back to 4K and ray traced shadow option set to 
Ultra, the gap between the 7900 XTX and 4080 became slightly bigger. On 1440p ray trace, we can see exactly the same constellation as we had on the 1440p no ray tracing chart. Interesting to see here though is that the 7900 XTX seems to be the better 4K GPU while the 3080 is still better at 1440p. Something that we think is attributable to the 7900 XTX's 24 gigs of VRAM versus the 12 gigs that the 3080 Ti has. Coming to Metro Exodus and this time it's with the enhanced edition because we still need the ray tracing up. Here we can see pretty much the same ratio we saw in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. While the 7900 XTX was a bit behind the 4080 in average and 1% lows and performed more like a 3080 Ti once the ray tracing options were set to the highest option. On 1440p it behaved somewhat the same but the gap wasn't as big anymore with the 7900 XTX being just slightly behind the 4080 with ray tracing both at the lowest and highest possible setting. For Far Cry 6 things changed significantly with it being clearly an AMD favorable game which was kind of expected given that there is a giant AMD logo popping up once you start the game. In every possible scenario both 4K and 4040p RT or no RT the 7900 XTX was the clear winner in both average 1% load and even 0.1% low. So now you know, wanna play Far Cry? Go Team Red. For Horizon Zero Dawn, we weren't able to test RT and non-RT as there is no RT option as far as we are aware of and still did the game surprise us in a weird way. While playing in 4K, the 700 XTX performed just like in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro, clearly better than a 3080 Ti but a bit behind the 4080. For 1440p performance, however, it started to act weird with huge FPS spikes followed by very expectable lows. And although the average min and max seemed weirdly high as they completely crushed a 4080, the 1% lows still showed what the actual performance will feel like with the 700 XTX being slightly behind a 4080. Coming to the most demanding game in our library, Cyberpunk 2077. On 4K no RT, the 700 XTX performed slightly better than a 4080 in average FPS and 1% lows. And once the RT settings were on, AMD's flagship quickly dropped far below the playable line and performed a bit worse than a 4080. Though the only GPU that is still able to be playable at this point was Nvidia's 4090. On 1440p it changed up again with the 700 XTX being slightly behind the 4080 in every metric, probably again because the 24 gigs versus the 4080 16 do not give it any benefit at this point anymore. And once you hit the ray tracing options on the benefit of Nvidia's RTX 4000 lineup really shows, with the only cards being below the playable line being the 700 XTX and the older 3080Ti. As the very last game on our list, and just for fun, we tried what would happen if we used all of those high-end cards to play some WoW. Which really isn't the best option to test anything, because A, it's not a very demanding title, and B, it's an MMO, and once somebody jumps a couple of times in front of you, flexing their Phoenix mount, you can really redo the test because because it's just going to be unfair. Anyway, running the same cores using all of the GPUs produced some really weird stuff. On 4K with shadow ray tracing option off, cause yes, WoW has a shadow ray tracing option. It just doesn't do much. With these settings, the performance turned out to be quite weird. With the 4080 outperforming both the 700 XTX and 4090 for some freaking reason. Turning ray tracing back on again started to make a bit of sense, with the 4090 having the best 1% lows, for by the 4080 and then 700 XTX. However, kind of interesting to note here is the ridiculous gap between a 3080 Ti and 7900 XTX in the 1% lows. Turning over to 1440p, no ray tracing, we are back to some weird stuff. The 4090 got beaten again in average FPS by the 4080, while the 1% lows are back to normal. For the 700 XTX, however, the 1% lows dropped so low the card lost against a 3080 Ti. That being said that we are also at the point by testing something as volatile and not made for high-end cards as WoW just doesn't make a lot of sense. In contrast to every RTX card which got some FPS when going from 4K to 1440p, which makes a lot of sense, the 7900 XTX lost on every goddamn metric. And the same thing happened in 4K versus 1440p with ray tracing on for the 4080. The card got quicker, which no, it shouldn't. But if you look at the the benchmarks individually while ignoring how they look like 
compared to each other, the 4090 is, in average, the winner in those metrics, with the 4080 following very close, and then the 7900X not too far behind. With all of the individual numbers out of the way, we wanted to create some general overview graphs that showcase the average performance across all games in a single number. Averaging all of the average and 1% lows and putting them in comparison relatively to a 3080 Ti, we saw a 25 and 37% uplift in performance between a 3080 Ti and a 7900 XTX for 4K gaming with ray tracing options enabled. Very surprisingly for us, this difference became smaller once ray tracing was disabled, with the 7900 XTX being only 14 and 22% in front of the 3080 Ti baseline. For 4040p, these numbers became even smaller with the ray tracing enabled games pushing out 8 and 7% more FPS, while RT disabled allowed for 19 and 16% more performance. So looking at the big picture, given the games that we tested of course, we saw roughly 25% more FPS going from a 3080 Ti to a 700 XTX in 4K and about 12 in 1440p. And to give you a comparison, a 4080 pushes 33% more FPS in 4K and 28% in 1440p. Another interesting point we saw over and over again was that the 700 XTX is almost comparable to a 4080 in rasterization games, while ray tracing options seem to be really on Nvidia's side. Still. Therefore, we have this graph that showcased the average and 1% low FPS drop that we encountered on average across all games when turning RT options on and off. In 4K, we can actually see that the drop wasn't as big as we expected going from a 7900 XTX to a 4080. Comparing it to a 4090, however, there the drop was significantly smaller. Though keep in mind that these values are in percentage comparison to the original value, not some absolute number. And as a few last graphs for today, here are the relative average and 1% lows compared to a 3080 Ti in each individual title. We have already seen these numbers a few minutes ago as a grouped together number, but if you would like to see them individually, here they are. So, RX 7900 XTX, a very interesting card, especially considering that we are still not fully out of the GPU madness nowadays. And I do believe that the card has really a lot going for it. The fact that it is only two and a half slot wide is a really good thing. And even our Zotac 3080 Ti, which lost in close to all metrics, looks big compared to it. Then comes the dual 8-pin power, which makes stuff just a lot easier, which is also great. Generally, I see the card as an easy to fit in thing. And given that the 100 watts Windows desktop issue seems to be solved now, it's a good card. But there is also a part of the conclusion that changed pretty much at the very last moment, the price. The RX 7900 XT X has a MSRP of $999, oh, US dollars, which being here in Europe, I, I am still waiting for the first time that I can just, you know, translate that number using the current exchange rate and not be devastated because it just never applied. Therefore, I just take a quick look at how much I would pay right now as I am writing the review, and then based on that value, I form an opinion. As of now, I would need to pay about 1300 euros for an RX 700 XTX, which actually is a a relatively good price. The cheapest 3080 would right now cost me 1400 euros, so that thing is of great value. Looking back at the numbers, we would be getting much more bang for less buck. The problem is, I did not realize until the very last moment of how much of a drop a 4080 made since November. For an up price of 35 euros, which is basically one and a half Noxia fan, I can get a 4080 instead of a 700 XTX. And given the performance difference between the two cards, the 700X just doesn't seem like such a great value anymore. And this puts me personally into a rather complicated position. To give you my personal take, I don't care about ray tracing nearly as much as Nvidia does. It looks nice, yeah, but I'm just not calling a game bad just because the beard of my character isn't visible in the pond five miles away. Like the marketing for RTX on and off kind of suggests that everything without RTX would look like Minecraft. So given that 
ray tracing just doesn't make a bad game look good and that I just don't care about it, I still do not believe that the RX 7900 XTX is a great value card because a 4080 would cost me two McDonald's menus more and give me more FPS and basically everything. It's a good value card given where we are still standing and it has the size and, and cable benefit but it's just not quite a 4080 in rasterization and for sure in, in, in ray tracing. So where does this leave us? Well, it's a it's a good card. It beats the 3080 Ti by miles. It's slightly behind the 4080 and the price is okay. But to say the price is good or to make it better value compared to a 4080, it would need to drop at least to 1100 euros to make me say go red instead of green. Maybe that will happen, probably, but probably not tomorrow. Who knows how this will evolve. But this should be it for today and the RX 7900 XTX. At this point, a huge thank you to AMD for providing us the card. And if you want to continue watching, have a look at our take on the Silverstone Seta H1 case. That thing came with two 160mm fans included. And by the way, we also have a Discord server that is slowly filling up. So if you want to join, the link is in the description below. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.